From the poverty shacks, he looks from the tracks to the tracks. And the hoofbeats pound in his brain. I was influenced by Bob Dylan in so many ways as a young person. The first album I ever had, my mother came home, she was a waitress, and she said, I bought this album for you, it looked like somebody you'd like. She brought me another side of Bob Dylan. And she was right, of course, that was it. That was it for me. I was, uh, I had found my guy. I was into R&B and jazz, and the things I was into were Nina Simone. I loved so much, but I didn't have self-identification. And then I got into Joan Baez, and I had some identification because, you know, I had hair like her and dressed like her, and she was such a strong presence, political maverick. But Bob Dylan was the whole package. Well, what about the... And Bob Dylan, for me, was the first person that I saw alive. He was like Arthur Rimbaud, alive. He was alive in my time. I could relate to just about everything he did. For me, it was like visceral, physical. I was a teenage girl. I mean, he voiced a lot of things. Um, you know, politically, poetically, but he had a lot of magnetism. I mean, for me, as a, a sexual energy, you know, not in a, you know, in, more in a sort of a, a fantasy term, you know. He was like my imaginary boyfriend for a while. People talk over situations. I remember the first time I saw Don't Look Back, I'd just come to New York to live, and I guess it was 1967. It was just such a pivotal moment for it, because it encompassed everything for me. It encompassed, you know, the, the, the hubris of, of youth. It encompassed art, poetry, the, the perfect sunglasses, everything, the way he walked. I loved everything in it, and I saw it after that so many times. I knew all the words, you know, it was just like, you know, all the words to a rock and roll song or you'd know the first page of Little Women. I knew all the dialogue of, of Don't Look Back. Puffing, <laughs> puffing heavily on his cigarette, he smokes 80 a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not me. I just saw all the ways that I connected with myself. How I walked, you know, how I phrased things. You know, his confidence, but also his like, quirky, sort of paranoid, edgy, almost fey ways of moving. The way that I reacted to it wasn't in an intellectual way. It was like, yeah, I can do that. I sort of dress like that. Yeah, I get that. If anyone doubts the roots even of going from Mozart to Rimbaud to the Beats to Bob Dylan to punk rock, he's he is in this continuing stream. You look at him and l look at him talking or listening to him talking to reporters, and uh, you know, he was, uh, he was nobody's patsy, that's for sure. I mean, sure, I could read it. You know, I read it, I read it on the airplanes, but I don't take it seriously. If I want to find out anything, I'm not going to read Time magazine. I'm not going to read Newsweek. I'm not going to read any of these magazines. He was a badass guy, you know.